church. He visited every week, and amid this, he had other things going on. He felt as if the whole world was coming down on him, and he, on, he had only a few days to live. He remembered his old lifestyle and pretty soon went back on the street. He started smoking marijuana as, as though and thought of suicide filled his head and he remembered God and prayed. He had a cousin who had just returned to Angola. He was studying psychology and was also Seventh-day Adventist. He, had, he offered him counseling and told him to build his life upon Jesus. Prior, become, prior became a regular part of his life, which gained the courage to dream again. He started to attend the Seventh-day Adventist church baptism class, and now he is a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Angola. He said he once used his influence to lead souls to hell, and now, with the help of Christ, he is using it to save souls to heaven. He finally have a, pur he finally have a purpose and a responsibility in life. Part of this quarter sub Part of this quarter, Sabbath school orphan will be used to help open a Seventh-day Adventist church, Seventh-day Adventist school in Gracca's hometown, Luanda, Angola. Amen. Thank you, Sister Harris, for that message. It's how important it is to have that community, have a positive affirmation friend, because without that lady ministering to that man, where would that man be today? Not, certainly not in the Adventist church. He would be elsewhere. So it is good to talk to other people about the love of Christ. Amen. At this time, we'll have our lesson review by a panel of godly women, beautiful, lovely, godly women will be doing our lesson review this morning. Uh, do we have any men who can help with the furniture so that the women, so that the women can sit? Thank you. <laughs> On our panel here this morning, to my right, I have Sister Smelly. I am Sister Gardner. To my left, my immediate left, we have Sister Watson. And then we have Sister Johnson. All right. And so as we studied this lesson, we realized that the, the saga continues with this dysfunctional family. And so before, but before we begin, I'm going to ask Sister Watson to pray a short word of prayer. Let us pray as we open the word. Father, in the stillness of this moment, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us to church safely, hasten the footsteps of those who are coming and help them to reach here safe. Bless this, bless, bless this church, bless this panel, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and I'm going to ask that the congregation feel free to join with us. You know, you have your points to make. Grab a mic and let us all study together. So, our topic, Joseph, Master of Dreams. And then our memory text. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. And so as we pick up from um, our last study where jo uh, Jacob, we know Jacob and the problem he had, 
had to marry two women and only loved one, ended up having 12 sons from four different women. And so we see here we have what is called a mixed multitude. And we know when you have, wherever you have mixed multitude, trouble is near. All right. And so Joseph here, we know Joseph is uh, the second to last son of Jacob. And he was the first son of Rachel, his beloved wife. And Jacob, as the, as the lesson said, the story of Joseph covers the last section of the book of Genesis. From his first dreams in Canaan to his death in Egypt, in fact, Joseph occupies more space in the book of Genesis than does any other patriarch. Although J Joseph is just one of Jacob's son, he is presented in Genesis as a great patriarch like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And as we continue, we learn why this is the case. And he says, as we will see too, the life of Joseph highlights two important theological truths. First, God fulfills his promises. And secondly, God can turn evil into good, Amen. right? So this is uh, more or less somehow a summary, but then we're going to go dig deep into what makes up this story. And so Sunday's lesson says family troubles. Because if she dreamed that she's in number three, she said, well, somebody going dead today. Hmm? And then she will go by the number three. And that's what her dream was all about. And that's what she lived by. You know? But coming to this dysfunctional family, family trouble, in every family, you have some dysfunction. Worse when the family is mixed up. Four different women and four different children is problem. Now, Jacob, he was like the smaller one. He started having all these dreams. Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, Joseph started having all these dreams. You know, and his father loved him because I would say Joseph's life was the own boy. He stayed home with his father. He was the, he was the youngest one. Yes. And, and he, he, was favored. he was favored by his father. And he's favored by his father. And you call him the wash belly. Yes, mm -hmm. and his father... No, he wasn't the last one, but he no. was favored by his yeah. father. He was young. He was about he 17. He was 17 yeah. when he started. For the mother. He was the last one for his mom. No? No. The first the one. The first one. Yeah, but he was pretty young, and um, I think in, I would say he was annoying. Um, in, my, in my opinion, I would say he's always running to his father. He's always reporting something. Well, the He's always He's a snitch. He was a snitch. He was a snitch. He was always re reporting something. And then his father kind of showed him more love than he would the others. Favoritism. So it, he was showing favoritism to him than he was showing to the other son. Now you're going to buy something for there are five children at home. And you're going to buy, you see one sweater. And you buy that one sweater or that one pants for me. But I have siblings, and you didn't buy any for them. What are you saying to the others once you did that? He made him a coat of many colors. And because of this, it shows, it shows just how much he was into that particular son and not the others. So in and regards to... Develop more hatred. Develop more hatred. His, um, his reporting always sending him to, oh, I'm, remember I'm the youngest one. I'm young, not the youngest one, but I'm young, and you're always watching over me, you're always watching what I'm doing, and then you're taking it back to my father. You're not working. You should be out there working with us. Okay. So it kind of built up the hatred more with those brothers in regards to what the father was doing. Brother Fabian, you had something to say? When she said, well, wash belly, because I'm one. But <laughs> some, of our, some of the parents have to be very careful, Virgin, how we love one than the other. 
I am I was hated by my sibling. Sorry to say it, but it was a grudge between me and my sibling. Every time I go to my mother's house, it's a problem. Oh, your son is there. So yeah. we have to be very careful, Virgin. It was back then, and that's what caused that animosity between them. The hatred. Because, yeah, the hatred. Because the dad had a special love for Joseph. Amen. Otherwise, from the other brothers. And even though he was bringing bad news, <laughs> bad news. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> the, us can relate yes, to that. Yes, Virgin. So yeah. we have to be very careful. I'm just saying we have to be very careful as parents so we love this one than the other. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. We must I, love everybody the same. I know some of us will give more trouble than some, <laughs> but the love relationship must always same. be the same when it comes down. Because if you do that and one see the love, more than the other. Yeah. You know it's going to bring animosity, the animosity yes, in right. the family. Yeah, okay. And things started to get worse when he started having all these, these dreams. dreams. Yes. yes, yes. And another uh, point. Oh, Pastor, you want to say something? Oh, yeah, you can finish your thoughts. Okay, I was just going to point out that according to the lesson, it, it was more than just this quote, um, his love for him. Um, the quote was, according to the lesson, um, had some significance that he secretly wanted to elevate Joseph as the um, to the status of the firstborn. Yeah, thank you. No, um, in a sense, Joseph was the firstborn. He was the firstborn of Rachel, mm -hmm. but yeah. he wasn't the, the the last child. Benjamin, remember yeah. Benjamin yeah, when yeah. she died in childbirth, yeah. yeah. and he asked for that later in the story. We'll see that. Yeah. Also, the word snitch. I think we are kind of mixing up the snitch thing with. With, with Joseph, he wasn't so, so, I wouldn't say he was a snitch. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, there are times when kids are doing things that are wrong, that are it, like, like not, not just kids, but adults, and these were adult children. Yeah. He was telling his father exactly what they were doing. Right. No, he, what, is, was that correct? Yes, yes that, was was correct. Correct. that was correct. He wasn't yeah. lying. He wasn't no. lying. No. no, if he had done the, other, the, the opposite, then he would have been incorrect for him, not to report that was right. being do done. On the outside. Secondly, they hated him not just because he was showing favoritism. Mm -hmm. He was doing the right thing, by the way. And we also need to understand that Joseph was a type of Christ. Joseph was a type of Christ. He was hated by his brothers. What did Jesus do wrong? Nothing. nothing. He was sold for like silver. Joseph. What did he do wrong for, to be sold for nothing. silver? Nothing. Nothing. No, he was also favored by his father. Now, yeah. I can't determine if my mother should love me more than the rest. I can't determine that. It was not his responsibility to say, Father, stop loving me and love them. You understand? Obviously, he was doing that which was right. Further in the story, we recognize that he was a godly boy. Yes. yes. The Bible says that God was with, with Joseph. Him. And every step of the way, God was with Joseph. Yeah. From the pit to from, the palace. From the pit to the palace. Amen. And we need to recognize that. Yep. Now, the dream that God gave him, it was not, it was not coming from Joseph himself. No. And I said this morning in the prayer line. I was looking at that to Pastor Don Koti. I was like, why, when we get dreams, or Joseph dreams, so to speak, it was something that is going to happen, revealed Correct. to him. Right. So you can't God stop it. was yeah. with him. God was with him. Amen. And you have to be careful in telling even your brothers your dream. Mm. Because he told yeah. them everything. Some dream don't even exactly tell your brother. Right. That's true. true. You understand what I'm saying? Because and the Bible said when he told them, they hated him right. before. Right. Yes. You know, and the last dream that he spoke about and told them, and his father, his father started pondering about it, you know, and yes. said, I wonder if something is in this dream going to be fulfilled. So it was kind of amazing. But he said to Joseph, you know, Joseph, you need to hold it down. Yeah, yeah I think he, yeah, he rebuked him in front of the brother, but he was um, pondering on the things that Joseph dreamed. And he knows that they are going to come to pass. He knows. Yeah, he knows. Elder Sarai? Elder. Yes, um, the lesson says, no one likes a snitch. That's a phrase. No one likes it. Nobody likes that. All right? But in the case of Joseph, it was not saying that Joseph was a snitch. It wasn't saying that. And I'm saying this to say that the lesson brings up the point that Joseph listened to his father's instruction, and he feared the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
So he was more obedient to his father's righteous teachings than any of his brethren. Amen. And he treasures his father's Jacob's instruction. Right. And so uh, with integrity of heart, he loved to obey God. He was grieved at the wrong conduct of some of his brethren. Right. And meekly entreated them to pursue a righteous course. Mm. Right. right, he tried. And so this only embittered them. And his hatred of sin was such that he could endure to see his brethren sin against God. So this was Joseph's attitude. Right. He loved righteousness. So not that he went to his father to report, to, to, to tell on his brother. I remember when I was small growing up, my mother would tell me no, not to gamble. Mm -hmm. Right? No, and every time I, I gamble, so. my brother would go and tell my mother that I'm gambling. Uh -huh. And I would be upset. Yes. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? But, but, but that, was my, that was to help me not to gamble. Right? So in this case, no, Joseph hated sin so much that he wanted to see his brothers reform. And so his, his going to his father was to help his father to reform them, to, con to tell him, this me, you need to change. Are you with me? And so this, and this even shows me that Joseph is a, even a type of Christ in this lesson. That he loved his father's instruction and he loved righteousness more than un un unrighteousness. Thank you. Right. So we move on quickly to Monday's the attack on Joseph. And so, with the attack on Joseph, it shows how, um, as I was saying this morning, it shows how Satan can use us and where he starts. Because he didn't send a stranger. He used someone that was very close. He used someone within the family. So, to shake things up, he used the brothers. He didn't go outside. He used someone which is very close. And then um, in it says he they really despised their brother because of what he was trying to do. Um, as Elder Sutter said, he was trying to reform them. Now, in regards to that, they found it to be a little bit forceful. Um, they found him to be a little bit talkative. You're always talking. You're always going back. You're always... So this is where they plan this is where they plan for him yeah to really take him off because and he was doing a little bit too much okay you know? at my okay. point is that the brothers hated him so much so that um they wanted to kill him you know but um Sa simon simeon um reuben reuben said no don't don't kill the lad let us throw him into the pit the pit was empty anyways no water was there but he came back to to um yes. to, when he yeah he came he back, come after. back but also uh importantly the other brother judah was the one who prevented him from, from, from being, being killed. killed because judah he was the one who suggested that that oh yes that judah was, was the one who yes. came and i have it so in at the least two of the brothers were not in agreement for him to be killed and then they didn't so um this that brother no they sold him as Pastor was saying, for 30 pieces of silver, 20. 20. 20. 20. So who, who was sold for silver? Jesus. Je Jesus. Jesus. 30. 30. And, and okay. Joseph so Joseph was, was, um, so, um, Joseph was the type of Christ. You know, we talk about deception. Christ didn't do anything. Joseph didn't do anything. Anyway, jo Joseph had the dream that his brother didn't like. And they didn't like him. Just as though they didn't love Jesus. But thank God... Um, at the end, righteousness prevailed because he was, he was, he was, um, from, as I said, from the pit to the palace. And you see the whole story that what happened in the end that Joseph was the person who um, saved them, the father, the mother, the whole generation. You know, just as Jesus was crucified and he saved us from yeah. our sins and destructions. You know, before we get to get any further, you know, I was thinking the father sent um, Joseph to go check on the brothers, you know? And, you know, Joseph didn't say to the father, you know what, I'm not going, you know, that those boys ate me. I'm not going anywhere. Joseph didn't argue. He, he went. He went to search for them. And where they say they was going to be, they weren't, they weren't there. there. And somebody saw him walking around and said, who oh, are you looking for? And he said, I'm looking for my brothers. Right. You know? And he went in search of them to see if they were all right. 
you know, and when they saw him coming, I tell you. Eh? And then I, that is where the lies and the, decep the deception and everything started yes. because um, if we kill him, what are we going to do? So they had to start planning. Um, they, they, ha they had to start plotting and everything. Then there goes breaking the Ten Commandments because you're going to go home. You're going to lie to your father. You're going to lie to your mother. You're committing a sin. Um, you're going to kill. Uh, as Pastor said this morning, we never put the. Um, we never thought about the animals that they kill. Right. The animals were innocent. They were. They didn't. They, it wasn't something deserving. So it wasn't a sacrifice for God or anything like that. They killed that animal just for their own purpose. Right, to cover so, up. To cover up the, um, their sin that they did. And they had such hatred. You kill an innocent animal that didn't do nobody anything. Just like Jesus, we all yes. killed him. And he didn't do anything. He came here to save us, just like how Joseph went there to check about the brothers and see what's going on with them. And then they killed the animal, they took off his coat, and they rubbed it in the blood, and they have the audacity. This part of it, I'm telling you, I can't understand them. Eh? They took the coat, and they didn't even say to the father, you know, our this brother. look like our brother coat. They say, your son. They say, isn't this tunic look like your son? Huh? What an evil set of brothers. Remember, um, Brother Fabian just said it just now. Brother Fabian said when he went home to look for his mother, what they said to his mom, your son. Mm -hmm. Your son. Your yes. son. Yes. Okay, we, um, we're running out of time. So Tuesday uh, speaks about Judah and Tamar. Right, and we, um, from this, Tamar, 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 Tamar. okay. Tamar. So um, we realize here that Judah left home, and um, he went and he got himself a wife, um, a Canaanite wife. And so the, the troubles continue because we know that, you know, they were not supposed to take wives from the Canaanites. And um, but it is significant because we we know that that's where that's where the the line of um, lineage of Jesus came from, all right. And so we we skip over to Wednesday. Joseph a slave in Egypt. Okay, so Joseph actually he was sold two times, and he ended up in Potiphar's house. And we realize that at um, Potiphar's house, he did not forget his values, Amen. his no. Christian values that right. were no. taught to him by his father. And in spite of what his brothers did to him, he did, he did not go out of the way. And he made himself, he, he was an example. He, he was given high positions. But then we know that the devil... Yeah. Always, yeah. always to show to have a say. To show. Exactly. Yeah, and so we know what happened when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. The guy was so yeah. handsome. He was oh, handsome. Yeah. The Bible and talks well, about yeah. how he you was know? fair. Yeah. And they, remember, his mother was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that guy's, you know, six pack. Right. Okay. You can you, you, you can imagine every day this woman was just look looking at him and lost it and lost in her yes. Oh, just look at those muscles Muscle. he got. And look at so, him well that built. Wasn't, that wasn't you know? that wasn't his plan yeah. though. No, and no, thank God. Jesus didn't he have none of that in mind. Something else. You know? And you can imagine she showed me and I'm like a hip and a little this. And you know how they how they dress. Remember how they the right. women who dress in but those Joseph days. He wasn't interested. He said how oh, can I do this thing and sin and against, sin against, against God. My, my God? God. Yes. And you I know? can imagine. And he never too. say how um what jo what um Potiphar going to do to him. He was thinking about what God, God is going right. to. Exactly. So that you show that is to show that he was committed. He was connected. Exactly. I tell you, in all you do, stand up for God because Amen. guess what? He will stand, stand up for, for you. you. Yes. Amen. Right. Because when she tried, when she tried something and grab him and said, "Come here, boy, I want you," <laughs> eh? him just back him jacket and said, "Hold that." 
And I, I can just imagine that she, you know, believed that because of the position she was in. Yeah. I thought, I think she would have thought that it, it would be an easy thing. But then she didn't realize who, she wasn't up against Joseph. She was up against God. Amen. Right? Amen. And then, I, and then she was, she felt so cheap. She said, look, all the she's boys. she's a liar. Eh? So, because she felt so embarrassed, that's why she made up all this lie. That exactly. he tried this, and this is what I have left. It's, just, it's cold. But I'm telling you, God, God was with him. Was him him because because can Romans 8, 28 say, all things work together, together for good to them that love the Lord. Amen. And God had a plan for him. Exactly. So sometimes God turned all this evil into good. Amen. Amen. So true, sis. And so we, we, knew, uh, we know exactly what happened. He was sent to prison. But even in prison, he had high positions in oh, prison. Yes. Right? Amen. And it so happened that because the same thing, the name that he had, a dreamer, he, he was a master of dreams. And, and God worked through him to, to explain or give the, 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 the explanation for the dreams that... Um, Pharaoh had, and he was reinstated. His he he was even given a higher position. Had they trusted him, right? And we see here where evil, you know, uh, good prevails that. over evil. Amen. And so, in spite of what he went through, and sometimes we realize should realize too that sometimes when we go through certain things in life, God has a plan for us. Because Joseph did not give up. He did not compromise his Christian principles. Right. He held on to God and God. In the end, God yes. delivered him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to wrap up. But, um... And your love. It's always jealousy come along. Verses um, chapter 39, Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and Amen. showed him mercy. Yes. And give him favor. So when you favor and love and you're blessed, it's all the jealousy come along. Amen. 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 All right. So we, um, this is where we wrap up and let us bow our heads. No, three minutes. We so have to wrap up. Your last thought. Your, th your okay, last so, thought. Um, my final thought um, would be when we stand with God, God stands with us. When we, um, when we work for God, God works with us. And it doesn't matter what we go through. Stand up for him and he will stand up for you. They will see him instead of seeing you once you're with him. Amen. So my last thought is when all seems lost, God is still in control. Amen. All right. And, this is where and we... my last okay. thought when God blessing is on you, there's no way the devil can rob it. Amen. Amen. That concludes it. And so that concludes our lesson study for this morning. We do hope you were blessed. And let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we give you thanks. We thank you, Lord, for the word. We thank you for these lessons. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will help us as we study these lessons, Lord, that we'll apply them to our daily oh, lives. Yes. Help us to understand that even if we are from dysfunctional families, Lord, you are still with us oh, and yes. you always can turn evil into good. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll continue to be with us throughout the rest of the day. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. little um, leaflet. We're looking today at recharging and refocusing through Christ. And we have about eight little questions here. And ask, how would you describe yourself? Are you an optimist, always thinking about the positive? Are you a pessimist? The opposite. <laughs> um, when I was in college, you see, I had this friend named Marilyn. You know what I used to call her? As I used to have little names for people. I used to call her Dr. Doom. Marilyn never said the good in anything. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Dr. Doom, what do you have to say now? 
that, that was my name for her. Um, are you a little bit of both, you think? Are you currently, next question, are you currently experiencing any kind of crisis? You know, we always have crisis, no matter how big or small. Could it be, phys it could be physical? It could be mental. It could be spiritual. It could be financial. I'm always going through financial crisis. So, um, do you pray every day? Do you read the scripture daily? How do you deal with difficult family issues? A while ago, we reviewed um, the dysfunction family. Um, do you talk about it? Do you pray about it? Do you ignore it? What is your favorite mantra or scripture? Now, my favorite is, out of evil comes for it, good. My other favorite is, with Christ in the vessel, I can smile at the storm. Another one for me. Seven, do you try to encourage others while going through a difficult time? Um, I spoke this morning about my inspirational body. I have a friend who we don't talk on the phone, but we're always sending inspirational thought to each other. Um, sister is also one of my inspirational body as well. Um, and I have a friend, Cheryl, even when she's going through a difficult time, she's still trying to uplift me. And I, I really appreciate her. And then the last one says, how do you recharge? Um, does anyone want to respond to these? Or will we try to look at it later this evening? Look at this later this evening? Okay. All right. So as we recharge and refocus, let us do that by connecting with the Lord in our daily quiet time and staying connected to him throughout the day. Prayer is the original wireless connection. That Wi-Fi signal is always strong. Even when the storms of life come and the billows roll and everything go crazy around you, that is when the signal is the strongest. Never have an issue with that. The time has come family for us to wake up because salvation is nearer now than when we first believed all roads lead to Jesus John 14 and verse 6 says Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me and when we wait upon him he will surely renew our strength according to his word Amen. And at this point, but before we do that, let us do our Sabbath school offering and birthday, um, birthday contribution. Let's call it that. <laughs> our offering and birthday contribution. And Brother Cliff, you can go ahead and play that song while we do the Sabbath school. Bow our heads together in reverence. Kind, loving, and compassionate Father, we just want to give you thanks, O oh Lord, that we can come into your presence once more. We can come into your presence where we can find joy, happiness, renewal of spirit, refreshing. We can drink from that fountain. And so, Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks. We are thankful for your provisions, you have provided for us, you have protected us, you have kept us safe, Lord. And we thank you that through it all, Lord, we can continue to depend on you. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the offerings and the birthday contribution. I pray, Lord, that you will bless it as only you can. And I pray, Father, that it will go towards your work. Have mercy upon us, I pray, Lord. And help us, O oh, Father, to pray one for another, to continue to support each other, and to lift each other up. Hear our prayers, we pray. And thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hello everyone and welcome to another Health Nugget presentation. Did you know that practicing self-control is good for your health? Yes, it helps you to balance life plus allows you to make right choices. According to research, the frontal lobe is the part of the brain that deals with decision making and is thought to be the seat of intelligence. On the other hand, unhealthful lifestyle choices like drugs, caffeine, tobacco and alcohol are bad for your health and alters your mental capacity. These toxic chemicals affects and damages the frontal lobe, thus causing loss of self-control and reasoning ability. It is also linked to many mental health disorders and traumatic events, but the most common form of frontal lobe damage is unhealthful lifestyle choices. Therefore, Temperance and self-control are necessary to avoid health-destroying behaviors. So, choose wisely. Your health depends on it. Galatians 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Remember to share with your friends, neighbors, and families. God loves you and have yourself a spirit-filled day. Hello, everyone. Amen, amen. All right, but Brother Brown asked me to say few words on the behalf of lay activities. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lay activities time. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in God's house? Amen. Amen. I just want to read from Isaiah chapter 6 to 1 verse 1 and 2 from the, the New King James Version. And this was the Magna Carta of Jesus Christ. It says here, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2 says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Amen. Now, I want to remind you, church, that we are a, visiting our communities. We are giving out lessons we are praying for our brothers and sisters in our communities. I want to also remind you that we are currently um, handed out, we have handed out uh, 51 lessons to our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. 51. Amen. Amen. And by the time the Sabbath shall have come to its close, then we should have been at least 55. Amen. Yes. Now, we want to encourage though our team members. We have at least eight teams, right? Um, we want to remind you that we'll be going out this evening. We just remind your personals, the people you are studying with, you are praying with, you are working with, that the graduation is just around the corner. Amen. And so each team should have at least 10, 10, 10 persons, 10 families. Amen. 10 persons working with. Um, the lay activities department is working along with you to do everything that is possible to get more souls to come to an awareness that Jesus Christ coming is even at the door. The work is not finished anywhere until it is finished everywhere. And so that is the mission of the church. That is our duty. This is our job to take this message to the dying world. Many friends are going to Christless graves. Many, many around here, many in this community, many of our friends, our neighbors, and unless we tell them the Magna Carta of Christ is to preach the gospel, 
Amen. God gave the message to his son Jesus and he gave it to John. And Jesus signified. He said, listen, that's it. And we are the last of the seven churches. We are the Laodiceans. We are in the Laodicean area. The last of the seven churches. And when this gospel shall have been preached in all the world as a witness, my brothers and sisters, something glorious will happen. It won't be the 70th anniversary of the queen sitting on her throne. It is more than that. We, are you ready to go home? All right, some people don't ready yet. Are you ready to go home? Where is home? The new Jerusalem. If you're ready, my friends, then we have to live as if we are ready. Amen. Some people are ready and some people are not ready. Now, we in the church should not be getting ready. We in the church should be ready. Right? The, those on the outside should be getting ready. But we should be ready and we should be helping them to get ready so that when Jesus comes, then we all go home to be with him forever. And so we are encouraging you this morning. We are we reminding you this morning of our obligation. We are reminding you of your duties. And listen, if you can sing like angels and you can preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say what? He dies for all. So let us preach the word. Let us witness because Jesus coming is at the door. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for what you have given to us. We thank you for the 51 individuals, the 51 homes, the 51 doors, the 51 hearts that have been opened. And even more so, Lord, uh, as we continue to pray for this community. We pray for sunrise. We pray for the mayor. We pray for the police officers who work in this area. We pray for the business personals. We pray for those who work in the saloons. We pray for those who are in the bars. We pray for those who are in the supermarkets. We pray for those who serve us the gas at the gas station. We pray for those who are in Publix. We pray for those who are in Walmart. We pray for our community because, Lord, you are coming back for those whom you love. And whom you love, you chastise that sometimes. And sometimes, Lord, you cause things to happen so that we may repent and turn and live. Many in our communities, Lord, are going down to Christless graves. And we pray, God, that this lay activities department will bellow the call, will preach the three angels' messages. Right now, Lord, we know that the general conference session is lifting the banner of Prince Emmanuel higher. And we pray for them. We pray for Pastor Wilson and his team. We pray for our leaders. And we are praying for ourselves so that as we continue to set the fire ablaze in sunrise and all over this area, that men and women will come to know you who to know is life everlasting. So thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Bless Ella Brown and his team. Bless each team here. And those who have not yet gotten stuck, Started, Lord, we pray that they will start even this very moment. Help us to live as if you are coming right now. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
the congregation to stand as we continue our worship today.
surrender all to Jesus today. Amen. We have to surrender to him because without him we are nothing. And we need him to guide us as we go on our journey on this earth. And there's so much that bombard us each day. So much wickedness that's happening around us. But we just want to give God our all because he's the only one that can deliver us. Amen. I surrender
surrender all to Jesus. Amen. Amen.
congregation, please stand. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. The church is called to worship. Praise God from whom all blessings heaven we thank you dear lord for bringing us all here together to worship you this morning we thank you dear lord for bringing us through this week of toil and labor you have kept us safe while we were on the highways and the byways lord you protected us from dangers that we can't even imagine we thank you dear lord for being the good and faithful god that you are to us we thank you so much for providing for us each and every day we ask that you will help us to be faithful to you likewise, dear Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house this morning to worship you and to give you all the praise and honor that is due to your name. We ask, dear Lord, that you be with every worshiper here this morning. You'll be with those who are online joining us in worship, dear Lord. Let everyone receive the blessing they come seeking today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sabbath church. Are you hearing me? I'm telling you, you are the full view to the Lord. I'm church. We look like church. And we come here this morning to praise the Lord. Let me see all who came here this morning without a praise. So everybody came here this morning with their praise. So if you come here with your praise, I want to hear your praise. So let's say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That sounds like it. If you only knew the blessing that salvation bring, you will never, never stay away. If you only see the table filled with lovely things, you would come to the feast today. And guess what? For the door is always open wide, and the Savior bid you come. There's nothing you have to pay, so be wise and step inside. And don't be like some who have thrown their last chance away. And I'm here this morning to welcome everybody in the house of the Lord. First, I want to welcome all our members, because members, without you, what would church be like? The door would have been closed. And because you are here this morning, I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. Now to our visiting friends. You know, this little church is always blessed with visitors. There's not a week that I don't come here and visitors are here. If it's even one or two. And some of them enjoy it so much that they come one time, two time, three time, four time. Right? So, this morning, I see some strange faces, you know, and I like to get a little bit acquainted to them. So, if you don't mind, if you are not a member of this church, Sister Cowan, your mother can't sit down, you know, old timers, don't your mother get up. 
but the rest of you, I would like you to stand up. I see three ladies at the front here, you know. And if you don't mind, what's your name, ma'am? Oh, welcome, sister. Coming from so far. You have just visiting? You'll be here, here for a while? Oh, my goodness. You can come back next week again. All right. And you, my sister? Oh, New York. Man, we have all the visitors coming from out of town. And we'll just... Oh, welcome, Anya. Anyway, sit down a little. I'll soon come back to you. This young lady here, Sister Jenny's, oh, Jamie, she just lost, Jamie, she just lost her mother, you know? And she's here now. We are her family, right? So we are welcome, welcoming her into the new life family. And Sister Jamie, cheer up. We are here for you. And I see a lady in a, that nice green down there. I don't know, I, I don't think I know you. Can you stand up and let me know who you are, please? Destiny from Lighthouse. So she come and she bring some light with her. And there's a lovely lady out down the back there in a nice outfit. Hmm? Besides, Sister Cowan, can you stand up, ma'am? Okay, welcome, Sister New Yorker. <laughs> anyway, and I see Sister Winsome can't stay away now. Coming from Fort St. Lucie, she loves us so much that she has to come back. Yeah, and there, oh, that little lady down there, she's a regular. She, she's a regular, she's a part of the family. You kind of knew, so you don't know her. I'm my other little lady now. I know you have been here, but I want to welcome you and keep coming because guess what? We want you to be a part of us. Right. Now, since everybody come with their praise, I want you all to stand up. Now, everybody stand up. And I'm telling you, my little fellowship song this morning is, I'm telling you, as long as God is by my side and God is by your side, everything is all right. But you know something? I didn't welcome Mother, Mother Cohen. Welcome is a long time we don't see you. So let me welcome you to new life. And all those who don't come out for a long time and out this morning, if I don't call your name, you're still welcome. So my little song this morning, it is all right. Because as long as I have the Lord beside me, it is all right. And as long as I have his hand to hold me and it watches over my soul, I know everything with me is all right. I'm ready to sing it like you mean.
God. For the Lord is our leader and chief soul. We must conquer. Have you heard? Oh, have you heard of the adventure? Real, real, real. Christ so real to me. I love him. Amen. 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 See this one. Yes, yes. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. God is good. And all the time, God is good and salvation is sweet. I'm so happy to be in God's house once more. Won't you say praise the Lord? Yeah. Won't you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Praise God. Amen. Amen. I can look. When I look around, I recognize whose roof is leaking and whose roof is not leaking. Some people are not here last week because the roof might have been leaking. Praise the Lord. Dry weather. The people are out. You don't have to fret about the roof. Ella Mackin is smiling. A lot of stop leak. <laughs> Praise God, praise God, praise God. So when rain falls, we don't expect some people. Are you happy to be in God's house this morning? God is a wonderful God. I'm happy to see those who are from Illinois, whether you're from New York. Anybody from Jamaica? You hardly can find Jamaica these days. <laughs> no, they're pushing up their hand. She said, she said, Jamaicans, Jamaicans. We are happy to have you here, Amen. We are happy that you are here. We are happy that Jesus is here. This is Women's Ministries Day. And we are so happy. All the ladies are feeling good. Let me see you smiling now. Smiling. All the ladies smiling. Ladies not feeling so good. I don't know if they're smiling or not because they have on the mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the eyes. Praise God. But we are happy in Jesus. What do you say about that? When I look over there, I see Sister Lopez. I look over here, I see Sister Winsome. So whether you're coming from Port St. Lucie or someplace in Boscobel. Is it Galena or Boscobel? Boscobel. That you look like Boscobel today, you know. Yes, I heard that. I heard that you and the government decided to build a airport down there. Praise the Lord. Great things happening in Boscobel, Sister Reed. Sister Cam, you hear that? Next time you fly, you don't have to fly. You be close to the country. Praise God. God is a wonderful God. Amen. Pastor Blake, are you happy in Jesus? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are happy to have you. And we have so many guests here today. We are happy in Jesus. Amen. You know, today is a good day, Sister, Sister, Sister Simpson, for us. Sister Simpson, um, Cochrane to, to lift an offering for the, for the um, building fund. Don't you think? Anybody vote against it? Say no. <laughs> so we, we are going to, we are going to, we have to lift an offering. We, uh, we have to lift an offering today in the aid of our, because we want to leave this place. Amen. And we are so happy when we see those who are online. We welcome you this morning. And we trust and hope that God's spirit is blessing wherever you are at this time. Glad to see Sister Robinson. And we have the people from Port St. Louis. We put one on the left and one on the right. We are happy in Jesus. Jesus is a wonderful God. Amen. We are happy to be here. And, and uh, let me tell you something. People are celebrating birthday today too. Birthday celebrants. Sister, sister, come have a seat all by herself. Praise the Lord. The, the, the birthday celebrants, they are here now. Let me see you. Who celebrated birthday this week? Celebrated birthday this week. This week you celebrate your birthday. You celebrated your birthdays this week, Sister God. When was your birthday? Yesterday. All right, Sister Reed, your birthday was today. Your birthday too, Sister? Today. No, we need some social security. We need passport. We need driver's license. We just can't say today, today like that. So we have three celebrants over here. What about this side? Sister whom? Sister Cochrane has her birthday. Um, oh, it was, it was the week when you were... 
I wasn't here, but I still have our gift. Okay, okay. And Brother Hines. Brother Hines. Roland Hines. Brother Hines. Where's Brother Hines? Yeah, Brother Hines is here. So, you know what? Let's all our celebrants stand. Stand up. Stand. stand, stand. Up, all our, cel all our celebrants. Up. And up. So, you're you. going to give us the day. What was the day, sis Sister G? Tenth. Tenth? Yesterday. Your, yours is, today is the 11th, right? So, 211. Yours was? And my mother's birthday is today. The second. All right. So, we have the second, the tenth, the eleventh. Who else? The twenty second oh, of last month. Yeah, but it celebrate this because first Sabbath, but I wasn't here. You wasn't here, all right, all right. So stand to see, stand to be putting you in the group. <laughs> who else? Who else? Sister Johnson get her gift already. <laughs> she oh, was the church. Was the second too. So sister Johnson, where is sister Johnson? Johnson. All right, sister Johnson, come and stand. Who else again? Who else? Who else? A lot of ladies born. Oh, and um, Emmanuel was the third. The first, the first. first. Oh, I go, I go, I go. Listen to you. Oh. <laughs> As usual. So, so, uh, As usual. <laughs> so we have Sister Johnson here. We have Emmanuel, and we are going to sing for them. Amen. Amen. All right. Where, where, where is Where is it? Where is it? Sister Henry. Sister Henry, you got to give us that version, that Jamaican mm. version. Happy birthday to you, dear celebrants. Happy birthday. Bring all the gifts now. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, dear celebrants. Happy birthday. Come to sister, sister Watson. Happy birthday. Come on, sister Watson. Happy birthday. She need help. Happy birthday to you, dear celebrants. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, celebrants. And we wish you the God's blessing. May God be with you. May God guide you and protect you as we travel along. Please come forward for your token. Please. All the birthdayites. All right. Who celebrated anniversary? Who celebrated anniversary? Anybody celebrated anniversary? Okay, you Can might you be online. Come? Celebrating anniversary, we want to say happy anniversary to you, and God bless you if you're okay. here and I've gotten a so present. on behalf of the church, we just give our token of our love. Yes, Thank yes. And, and we, God bless you, my sister. How you doing? Glad to see you. You look like a million dollar today. <laughs> on behalf Baby. of the church, we'll give you a token of our love. We elbow. Thank you. Brother Hines is right there. Brother Hines has to look what's in the bag, you know. Can't give him. <laughs> you can't give him lady Hines, stuff. Yes. So, so we have Sister uh, Reed right here. Yes. I know, right? So on behalf of the church, I'll give you a token of our love. Sister, Sister Gardner, where's Sister Gardner? Sister Gardner, come along. Oh, Brother Hines. Brother Hines. Here. Brother Hines. Let me look. Make sure. All right, so we have anybody celebrated anniversary. We want to say happy anniversary to those who are lying. God bless you. We hope that God will continue to be with you wherever you are. Sister Gardner is over there. All right. All right. Thank God for those who are celebrating. Amen. Amen. And just before we go any further, I want to register my... I have one more. Who else? Wait until February. Put it on in February. We want to register our thanks to those who supported the Thanksgiving service of Sister Marceline on Thursday oh, yeah. evening. You know, I really give God thanks. We had a number of people came out to the funeral service. We supported Jimmy's, oh. and we give oh, God oh, thanks. Yes. You know, I remember seeing, I got, I got a call from Brother Fabian. He left work. He was getting, rushing home back to the funeral. We have Sister Watson, Ella Toot. I don't want to call names, but we want to say thanks. You know, Sister Henry is always supporting these funerals services. We give God thanks. The community service, we give God thanks. We thank Sister um, Sister Watts, Sister Smelly. We, we had a brown, we had a brown stone there. Sister Gordon. Sister Gordon, the Gordon, early, 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 yes, brown stone. 
We had Brownstone. The entire Browns family, we call them Brownstone. And so we had the city of Brownstone came out. We, we want to give God thanks. Your name wasn't called, forgive me. Lack of knowledge. Ella, 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 Ella. Yeah, I said Ella, Tooth, Ella Matthews. And, um, and, and those who came out, we want to give God thanks. Jimmy, we continue to pray for you. Understand that you have a card I'd like to read or something like that. We want to give you the opportunity to do so at this time. We want to let you know that she is a member of the community. We have supported her. We will continue to support you. And we will not stop supporting you until you walk in the watery grave of baptism. Somebody better say amen. amen. That is our dream. That is our aspiration. We've been knocking on the door for a while now. And the LeBron family has been linking. As a matter of fact, he told me that his mother died because he's a part of the family, right? And so we give God thanks for the support. And we thank you for, for just opening your hearts to the Seventh-day Adventist Church here at New Life. All right, you have a card that you like to read. I give you the privilege at this time to do so. And Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first, I would like to give a special thank you to my brother, Andre Brown, and his entire family. Amen. Um, he's been there for me since the start of this whole ordeal, supporting me through this hard time. Second, I want to thank you, Pastor Wilson, for also being there for me and supporting me and preaching at my mother's funeral. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Also, I would like to give a big thank you to the entire church for those of you who were able to come and support me. I am deeply grateful for all of your kindness and sympathy that you all have shown me during my heart, my time of loss. I appreciated everyone who showed up at the funeral on Thursday. I thank you all for the love and care during this difficult time. It's deeply appreciated and it'll be forever be remembered by me. Thank you all once again. Loved by me. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate Amen. it. Thank you so much on behalf of the New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen. I want to let you know, Jimmy, that this is a community church. This is your church, and this church is for the community. We are here to serve you, and we'll do so wholeheartedly. In the same breath, I'd like to remind you of the passing of Sister Dixon, Edric Dixon. Um, our Thanksgiving service will be held at the Lighthouse Seventh-day Adventist Church on the 19th. Of, of this month, that's next week after next Sunday, right, Pastor? Thank Pastor Cowan and his team there. And um, the, funeral, the Thanksgiving service will be at 11 o'clock. The viewing will be at 10 o'clock. Um, so we are asking you, Bridget, to support. This is a member of the New Life Seventh-day Adventist family. She has been a shatid for a while, so some people haven't really known her. I remember spending the entire day almost at Elijah's Bell, um, funeral home Thursday. I went there for an appointment at um, 11 o'clock. I left there about 3 o'clock and we had the funeral at 6. You know, sometimes the work goes on and on. So let's keep them in our prayers, amen? And let's support uh, this, this family or these families at this time. These are the special announcements that I have. Just want to remind you that we'll be having board meeting this evening after Vespers and the there's a special social, the special social will be next week, Father's Day social, in, a, in, in association with our Pathfinders Club. And we're asking you to support this program, support our Pathfinders, so that we can have a wonderful time together. Amen? Amen. A long time you haven't been at social, right? So come and socialize with brothers and sisters. Let's have a wonderful time. Remember, with Christ in the vessel, then we can smile at the storm. I know... We are going to ask you to do whatever you can at this time so that we can move out of this place and go into a place of our own. Amen. And so whatever God has laid on your heart, we are going to ask you at this time to leave the comfort of your seat. If you're not so comfortable at this time, please, whatever it is that God has given to you, we're asking each member, each member, to, uh, for a meager donation of a at least $1,000. So far, we are, we, want it, we are grateful for those who have given their $1,000. And some have given more. Some have given more. And we are, 
we're asking you, friends. You know, it's, it's sometimes we have to dig a little deeper. We're asking you to, to dig, do dig a little deeper. And this is not one thousand dollars per family. It is one thousand dollars per member. Okay. So we're asking you this time. Be God's given. Write that check. Don't matter Bless how you try. So we ask God's blessing. Whatever, whatever it is. You know we don't come every week. We would love to. And those who are online, remember the number there, 954 Whatever. And we are grateful the Lord friends. Is we, are in heaven. we give God thanks. Oh, no. We thank our visitors too for, for our guests. I like to call them my guests. The our guests for their participation. You give. Remember you can get a tax right now. Just keep on members. giving. Let them know. Because We're expecting great things, it's friends. It's really true. That's no matter you who you are. We're asking you to give God thanks for that which God has given you. Oh, thank you so much. That God will continue to make his, his blessings. No matter how you try. See, friends, God has been so kind to us. Some months ago, you a friend of ours, the Eli family, gave us a gift, a bountiful gift. My Lord. As a matter of fact, he's not living in state. No he's in matter our how neighbor in state. You try. A bountiful gift. We're asking for do donations like that. $20,000, $5,000, $10,000, so that we at least can move. That you are we are living God's blessing. And the Lord we are seeking his blessing. We see God's favor. And we are asking your friends to do whatever oh, it is that God has placed on your mind. And share your testimony with us. The sacrificial the giving that you have you give, given to God. Your the testimony that you want to share. We give to We're going to make it a proper time for you to share that testimony. We have a call. Just call keep on testimony. giving. Because it's really true. Our heads are bowed and that eyes are closed and our thoughts. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of financial blessings that you have already bestowed upon your people. We realize, Lord, that we can't beat your giving. The more we give to your cause, the more you give to us. It's as if you are re-gifting us is a package we are, and we are giving back that which you have given to us. We ask oh God that you will multiply your blessings on the faithfulness of thy people. Show thy people favor oh God. Lord we know that one day one day we shall enter into the joy of our Lord. One day Lord we may be able to hold someone's hand who we have helped along the way through the financial gifts that you have given to us. So we pray for those who have no gift, no job at this time, that you'll give them a job. We pray for those who are sick, that you will bring healing. We pray for those who are naked, Lord, that you will clothe them. We pray for those who have nowhere to live, that you will find shelter. In fact, you be their shelter until that shelter comes. We thank you, Lord, for that which you have already given to us. Open our hearts so that we can see and analyze and just ruminate the blessings of our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes so that we can see that as well. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. In the name of the one who died for us, the one who is coming back, the Redeemer and King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let God's people say, Amen. It can't be God's given, friends. No matter how hard you try. We want to thank you for just worshiping with us. And we pray that this worship experience that you'll be having today and experiencing for yourself, don't just keep it to yourself, but share it with others so that they too will come taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks for worshiping with us. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Yeah. Just 
Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Whether they are black or white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus died for all. The Lord sent a powerful wind, causing a violent storm that threatened to sink the ship. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors begged their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to help make the ship lighter and stay afloat. But below the ship's deck, Jonah slept peacefully until the captain found him. How can you at a time like this? The captain shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention and save our lives. The ship's crew wanted to know who had offended the gods, causing this terrible storm. So they cast lots. The lots revealed that Jonah was at fault. The crew demanded to know what Jonah had done to put them all in danger. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? They asked. Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Now, Jonah had already told the sailors that the purpose for his trip was to run away from the Lord, to serve him. Jonah didn't stay floating around in the calm sea for long. Suddenly, a huge fish that the Lord had sent came up from under him and swallowed Jonah whole. Jonah lived in the belly of this massive fish for three days and three nights. Jesus died for all the children, all the children of the world. Whether they are black or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for all the children of the Father, we thank you for our children, dear Lord. We thank you for bringing them out today, Lord. I ask that you will continue to bless them, guide them, dear Lord. 
And as they go to school this week, dear Father, we put them in your hands, dear Lord, and ask that you'll protect them, dear Father. Bless God and be with the parents, dear Lord, as they send them out, dear Father. I pray that you will give them your undivided protection, dear Lord. I pray in your son's name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Will our deaconess come forward at this time to receive our tithes and offering? Remember this, and whosoever sow it sparingly will weep, will reap sparingly, and whosoever sow generously will also reap generously. what he have decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or on the compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be room to receive it. Father, we thank you for giving us life, that we, for providing jobs for us, Lord, so that we could return what belongs to you. I pray that, you'll help, that you will multiply it there, Lord, so it may go to furtherance of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
is God. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. It's time for prayer, saints. We are punctuating our worship with. The key in the hand of faith. That unlocks heaven's storehouse. And this morning as we pray, we, we want to pray for our community. We want to pray for our shut-ins. We want to pray for our young people. We want to pray for our students who have started your summer vacation. We're told that the devil is always busy finding work for idle hands. We're praying that this summer will be different. That our kids, our young people will have something worthy, worthwhile to do to occupy their minds. We are praying for our church. We are praying for those individuals. 51 lessons we have given out. Not so long ago, we heard about what took place in Buffalo and in Texas. And here in America, my friend, it's a field for that old dragon. Back home where we're from, in parts of the world, Ukraine and Russia, the war goes on and on and on. And many are embracing themselves for a low war. We need to pray. It is time to pray. Many, my friends, are going to Christless graves. We, we want to pray for those who are online today who maybe down and out. You may have lost a loved one like Sister Jimmy, Jimmy's or Sister Carol who lost her mother. We want to pray for them too. We want to pray for Sister Buckley. In fact, the Buckley's family, we want to pray for them. They have lost a cousin in a terrible accident. Last week we heard a death of about three or four persons right down there. We want to pray for those who are sick physically sick I want to pray for those who are spiritually sick as well most of all we want to pray for ourselves God will use us to do his work and as we pray we remember that today we are celebrating women's ministries day at new life with our ladies our mothers our sisters our grandmothers our daughters, our friends, our co-workers, wherever you are, join us in prayer, please. And as far as possible, if you can kneel where you are, let us kneel reverently before God. He who kneels before God is able to stand before anyone. He's the bottom. We are the clay. My friends online, we invite you to share Upper. If you're doing something at home, we invite you to lay it aside as we pray. If you're driving and it's safe to pull off, then please let us pray. We pray for our upcoming program. We pray for our community. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our general conference. We pray for our sick ones, those who are planning to go the ways to the baptism, we pray.
come. Fill me now. Fill me now. This morning as we pray, we just want to remember Sister Susan. That God will be with her. Brother Ian, God will be with him. And in a special way, like we fill Elisha, that he will fill Sister Brown, that as he speak unto our Father who art in heaven, that he will pour out his spirit and use her in a marked way. Praise God, praise God. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stain. Almighty God and our Father who art in heaven, great is your name and greatly to be praised. You are God all by yourself. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, it is to you we come. We come, Lord, with our nothingness. We come, Lord, and we ask that you'll break us now, that you'll melt us, that you'll mold us, that you'll fashion us according to your will. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you will not cast us from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from us. Lord Jesus, we come. As our faces differ, so are our problems and our needs. But you said we must come. Because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is there. So we come, almighty God. And we come because you are a good God. You are a merciful Father. You promise, Lord, that you supply our needs according to your riches in glory. And so we come because we know that there's no disappointment with you, Lord. Amen. We come, Lord, and today we celebrate Women's Ministry Day. Lord, the world is celebrating Pride Month. But we pray, almighty God, that as women, you will empower us and help us to have pride in you and in ourselves, knowing that you said in your words that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. Help us, Lord Jesus, to live out your life in our community that men and women can see you in us. Help us to walk the walk. Help us to talk the talk. Help us to dress modestly, Lord, that your name will be glorified because we are proud to be called daughters of God. We pray over in the Father that you will help us as women to draw nigh to you because you promised that you will draw nigh to us. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you will help us to be your true and faithful witness. Lord Jesus, if the truth be known, in our homes we are doctors, we are teachers, we are nurses, we are the cook, we are the housekeeper, we are the mental health doctor. We go through so much trials, Lord Jesus. We have to take care of our families. We cry for them, Lord. Many nights we go to our beds with tears in our eyes on our pillow, Lord, crying out for our children, our wayward children, our wayward daughters, our wayward sons. In truth, Lord, sometimes our men are even wayward. But mighty God, in the name of Jesus, and upon your word and upon your authority this morning, I plead the blood against Satan because we know that the devil, Lord, has come down to kill and to steal and to destroy. But mighty God, you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You had warned us, Lord, because you said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. So we know that the devil is wrath, Lord God. 
but I thank you, Jesus, for knee city. Because you said in your words, when we're on our knees, the devil trembles. So right now, Lord, the devil is trembling because men and women are on their knees crying out to their father for help. Have a father, have mercy upon us, mighty God. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you will empower us. Fill us with your sweet Holy Spirit, Lord. Wash the scales from our eyes that we can see you high and lifted up. Help us, Lord Jesus, not to play church anymore. It's about time to go home. It's about time you're going to burst the eastern sky. Help us, Lord Jesus, to get ready. Because ready or not, you are coming. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are mourning, those who lost their moms, those who are sick in the bed of affliction. You are the doctor of all doctors. So, mighty God, we pray even now with your nails card hand that you will touch those with diabetes, yes. touch those with high blood pressure, touch those who are having heart issues, touch those who are having kidney problems, touch those, Lord, who are going with arthritis, whatever problem, mental health issue, Lord. It is real. It is real even in our church, Lord Jesus. Many of us are suffering, Lord Jesus, but we know who the bomb in Gilead is. We know that you are the doctor. We know that you you say in a words that you were touched with the feelings of your our infirmities and by your stripes we are healed so help us to claim the promises lord god help us to claim them because you are true and you are faithful we want to put before you sister susie lord those others who are sick lord you know them lord i don't know the names i remember the names of everyone but you know them mighty god because you said even the ear on our head are numbered so you know everything lord that is going on in the lives of your people we pray, Lord, that we will turn to you because you said if we seek, we will find. If we knock, the door will be open. You said if we call, you will answer, Lord Jesus. You promise and you will never go back on your words. So help us to believe and have faith into your words, into the promises, because you will never leave us nor forsake us. Help us, Lord Jesus. Those who are without jobs, we pray that you will provide for them because you are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. We pray, almighty God, that we will look up to the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from you, O oh God. We pray, Lord Jesus. We come because we need you now more than ever. We need you in our lives, Lord God. We pray that you'll empower us, Lord, that we will work together with our spouses, that we'll work together with our children, that we will work in the community, that we will go out in the highways and the byways, and we'll tell men and women to come taste and see that the Lord is good. Father, I just want to pray for this young man, Lord, that I met yesterday at the car dealer. You sent me an assignment, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that I was able to witness to him, Lord. I pray even now that you will move over him with your sweet Holy Spirit. He wants to walk with you, Lord, but the devil is trying to play a trick. So we plead the blood against Satan. We rebuke Satan this morning in the lives of our friends, in the lives of our families, in the lives, in even our lives, mighty God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will cripple and paralyze every plans that the adversary would have or would want to get us falter. We know, Lord, that no weapon that form against us can prosper. We know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. So take full control, Lord. Be with our visitors, Lord. They didn't come here by chance, but by divine intervention. Because you have a word for them. Something, Lord, in our worship service you want to get their attention with. So we pray, Lord, that even now, even now that you will send your holy angels to encamp around this place. We pray, Lord God, that you'll take full control. Take control of every worshiper here, Lord. 
Bless us, Lord. Broaden our territories. Whatever we are going through, Lord, let us lay it at the feet of Jesus because you are sure to take care of us. You promise, Lord. We want to put before you, Lord, your mouthpiece for this time. God, she's just a woman. And so, Lord, we pray even now that you will break her, that you will melt her, that you will mold her and fashion her according to your will. We pray that you'll send your holy angels with a live call from the altar and that you'll touch her lips and that she speak, help her to speak as an oracle of thine. Help her, Lord, hide her behind the cross. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be on high, Lord, that men and women will see you and come to glorify your name. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify you. We say glory to your name. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus, because you are a soon coming king. So take full control now, Lord. What we fail of asking thee, grant it unto us according to your will. You know everything, Lord. So take everything, Lord. We pray, almighty God, that you'll accept our worship now, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. stand for our scriptural acknowledgement coming from the book of Exodus 20. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is in thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. Happy Sabbath Church. Or him 
soft phrase is hymn number four, um, 456. My Lord and I. scripture reading will be taken from Jonah 1 verse 1 to 13 you have 1 to 3 on your on your program there's a correction to that now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me but Jonah rose up to rose up to flee unto Tarsha from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wariness that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship and he laid and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper, arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his and they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, we may know of whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said thy unto him, then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for those cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, why hast, done, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Because he had told them, then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee? And that the sea may be calm unto us. 
for the sea wrought and was tempted. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men row hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and the tempestus against them. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. You may be seated. so much work. <laughs> so today, the speaker, our speaker for today is Sister Melody Walker Brown. Sister Brown has made it her single most important goal in life to become wholly chosen and a precious vessel that Jesus has redeemed. She's destined to make prayer the breath of her soul and the secret of her spiritual power. She fights daily with the aid of the Holy Spirit to become selfless, take up the cross and follow Christ with her every being. She believes that when these goals are met and practiced, then the secondary titles will automatically fall in place. She's a virtuous wife, an honorable uh, mother. She's a dedicated friend, a kind and friendly neighbor, an honest employee, and an exemplary sibling. She's a dedicated employee and practicing citizen of heaven, living on earth. Uh, Sister Walker Brown holds a master's degree in education and also a master's degree in public relations and advertising. She currently um, educates at Sanders Park Elementary School of Communications in jour and Journalism, and she's also a professor at Broward College. She enjoys being a wife, she enjoys being a mother and a friend to all, but above all, Sister Walker Brown's greatest desire is to make heaven her home, to depopulate hell, and to populate heaven. May as God use her today, may our hearts be blessed, and may we become closer drawn to Jesus by the word that he has given to her. But before she comes, we will hear a word from the Lord in singing from Sister Mahalia. I spoke of your honor. I have no defense, but that's when mercy walked in. Presented 
preached in the songs in this the children's story so really um, my job is probably already done but I spoke with the pastor earlier and he said listen we are a traditional church we don't try to get out by one o'clock or two o'clock you can go as long as you want in fact we have lunch outside I, I don't know if there's lunch outside I just saw something with some foil paper covered and that just tells me that there's lunch outside right well it is my second time um, in the podium and I'm very 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 honored and privileged to be um, back here because this is quite a friendly church what a friendly friendly church you know I was saying pastor I love the church because when every other church shut down and every other church cut out things out of the program not this church everything you know scripture reading in fact when they asked what about the scripture in our open song I said to pastor Cohen we provide that too, you know, so uh, we've long passed those. We don't have to do that in some churches, but I'm so happy that this church still holds on to the elements of tradition, right? Amen. Well, I thank you, whoever read that um, little synopsis of whoever I am, but I just want you to know whatever you forget about what she said, I am just a nobody trying to tell somebody 
I are trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Amen? Amen. What a theme you have for your Women's Day. And by the way, the women are looking beautiful. I was beginning to start counting, you know, women, and then I stopped because they definitely outnumbered the men. That's probably because the men gave up their seat to sit, some of them to sit outside, and they're in tune with the, with the program nonetheless, right? Um, the theme is, what is it? Uh, get involved. What is it? Recharge and refocus. What a theme. That's actually the theme for the um, somewhat for the general conference. I don't know if some of you have been following, but they're saying Jesus is coming. Get involved, right? Get involved. And um, of course, to be to get involved, you need to be recharged and you need to be refocused. So I just want to thank um, Pastor for inviting me back here. Boy, <laughs> every time I look at Pastor, I have to laugh. Well, he's quite the entertainer, you know. I <laughs> I heard him last night um, when we were by Sister Cohen celebrating her birthday, and I laughed all the way there there, and I laughed all the way home. I probably laughed in my sleep. You know, so when we were planning our banquet, I said, nah, don't try to get any other MC. Pastor Colin, can you please get Pastor Wilson for us because he's quite um, the entertainer. God bless his soul. Well, uh, the song says, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the nail printed hand. Thank you for the price you paid because worthy is the lamb. He was indeed worthy. That w that's why he stood up when our, the case was being tried. And the song said that mercy walked in and pleaded my case forgiven when mercy walked in. Well, aren't you glad to serve a God of second chances? No, man, you don't sound happy at all. Are you not glad to serve a God of second chances? Yes, one more time. You have the ability to worship here in church today. One more time you see your brothers and your sisters. One more time. I was invited and used second chances. Amen, amen. Let us pray as we get into the message for today. Our God and our Father, such a privilege it is to stand here in your presence. Already, oh God, my heart and my body has been in worship. But now, Lord, I'm asking you to use me in a remarkless way. May not I be seen, but may Christ be seen. Father, my prayer is that when everyone walk away from this meeting, that they would have said it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit may give each individual their message as they hear it. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins, we pray. May our hearts be open to the dropping of your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, almost everyone in church today is familiar with the story of Jonah, right? We're pretty much familiar with it. It's probably one of every children's favorite stories. Um, and that makes today's sermon easy um, to relay. It's one of the most well-known, but also one of the most questioned Bible stories. The account of Jonah being swallowed by a great fish and spending three days and three nights in the fish's belly could only happen through the intervention of a good, a great God, right? This is only one of the accounts that proved that I serve a powerful God. What about you? See, to understand where I'm going with the sermon today, you will need background knowledge. And you kind of got that during the, the children's story and also the um, scripture reading that was so well read. So you need a little background knowledge and the account of Jonah. So allow me to drag your memory a little further. It's a simple story, but the lessons therein are very powerful. The story goes like this. God told Jonah that he needs him, he needs him to go to Nineveh. Why? Because Nineveh was the place where preachers go to. None, well, by the way, Jonah said, nope, not going there. Didn't go. He started to run. He started to hide. But why was he hiding? Because, brothers and sisters, as you know, Nineveh was the place where preachers go to and somehow came back with a stroke. That's the kind of place that Nineveh was. You know, Nineveh is the kind of place where Pastor Wilson's um, bald head, really, would probably start growing gray hair. There was no hair there already, but that's the place that Nineveh was like. Nineveh was a place that no preacher or no church district wanted to visit. Do you know some of those churches today? 
No, no, we don't have those churches here in Fort Lauderdale. But what some preachers don't know that it is the blessing of God that are on people and not necessarily the places, right? This means God then can send you to the toughest place to preach the word of God and God can still bless you and the people there. Well, I've heard many pastors told them their stories of Nineveh. In fact, I remember hearing one American Trini pastor who told his story of Nineveh, a.k.a. Tivoli Gardens. Now, how many of you here know about Tivoli Gardens? Just raise your hand. Yes. Well, here we have an American Trini going into Tivoli Gardens. Not many preachers in Jamaica itself. For those who know, it's one of the worst. Well, it probably was one of the worst places in Jamaica at the time. So not, not even Jamaican preachers wanted to go into Tivoli, much less a Trini pastor. Amer no, I need to put American on it. American Trini pastor. And those of you who know Tivoli Gardens back in the day would agree with me that it was pretty admirable of this pastor. You know, it's violence, guns, gangster, you name it, it was there. Well, Pastor Charles, he decided that he was going to join other preachers into going into Tivoli at a time when not even a stray dog wanted to go into Tivoli. Well, needless to say, he went in on two feet, came back out on four, crawling, because you can't walk straight out. You got to keep down. You don't know what gunshot will come your way. But the amazing thing about this story is that this pastor went back again the next day. Well, Yes, very brave, but he was determined to deliver the message of God, but not Jonah. Jonah said, God said to Jonah, Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach the word. Now, keep in mind that this is the same God who said to Elijah, go preach to some dry bones. Now, God is, you have to, you, you really have to question or wonder, but what does God see in people? What does God see in you? Do, does God see the outcome and you may not see it? Well, God was sending Jonah to the most despicable, most evil, most adulterous, most sinful, corrupted, atrocious place known to man. And in those days, Nineveh was the center of crime and wickedness. Ellen G. White characterized it as the bloody city, full of lies and robbery. And the prophet Nahum compared the Ninevites to a, a, a cruel, ravenous lion. That's what Nineveh was like. Not only they, did they commit heinous crimes, but they would boast of it as well. When, when they kill or when they commit crime, they would cut off the necks of people, put it on the fences or the gates, the city gates, so people would see that this is Nineveh. Right? They would burn even the bodies of women and infants alive. So you got the picture. I won't go any, any, any further. Well, that's where God was sending poor, feeble, little, wimpy Jonah. Well, I just, I, that, the Bible didn't describe him as that. I just fe did my description. Well, you would think God would send the baddest, toughest, you know, um, ruggedy, you know, the, 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 probably not Pastor Cohen. You know, you know, you know, you know, we're talking about somebody with muscles. You would think that's who God would probably want to send in a place like Nineveh. But see, that is what man would think, right? But God is sovereign. He's God all by himself. He sends who he wants when he wants to, to do even, he will make the humblest um, lamb become a lion once God is able to use him. Amen? Amen. See, he sometimes sent preachers to do certain or to preach at certain churches. Not so much to save the people at the church, but to save the preacher. Do you understand me? Right? Pastor, thank God you were sent to new life. Amen? Amen. 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 See, who knows what you would have probably come across had you been sent to other churches. God is good. So he said to, to Jonah, Jonah, go to Nineveh, go to that city, and preach the word. Pastor Cowan, you know all too well 
that when you're on God's path, on God's mission, God will protect you because God will never send you anywhere where God is not able to go himself. Do you understand? When God sends a preacher to a certain city, God does not have, he doesn't have to tell the preacher about what is going to happen in the city. God is going to tell the preacher what to say in the city. What is going to happen is left up to who? God. Well, and that is what faith is really about. You just have to go with faith, Jonah. What happened is left to God. You don't have to see the end. You just need to see the beginning. Well, God called Jonah. Jonah, go to Nineveh. He told him what to say, but Jonah rejects the call. Jonah ran from God. He ran from his responsibility. He was running from God and what God had called him to do. You see, when you have many, many, well, in fact, we have many, many Jonas sitting in church today. Yes, I know, you know, you say, you have many, many Jonas sitting in church to, today. Well, what do you mean by that, Sister Brown? Well, there are people here who God has called to do his work, to deliver a message to someone, to a group, to a community, but those people are running. All right, let me bring it closer to home. There are people here who God puts in certain position to work for him, but you are running from your responsibilities. God tells some of us to work in a certain capacity, a certain ministry, joint family life, children ministry, pathfinder, community service, AY, and for some reason, you don't think you're good enough. You don't think you can handle certain responsibility. You don't think certain things should fall in your lap. You don't think you're qualified. You find every excuse in the book. You are running from God. You know, I had the privilege to be on the nominating committee for my church recently. And one of the things, you don't really talk about what takes place in nominating committee. So I'm going to be very general. It was so burdensome that it took me in prayer. And we should be praying anyhow, but I was praying for something completely different. We were in the nominating process for weeks, weeks. Why? Because you call someone and ask them to serve, and the answer was no. Constantly, there was no, 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 no coming from every angle in the church. At that point, we really had to stop to pray because you're calling people to serve in the church and the calling when you have a nominating committee that prays together, it is the Holy Spirit that tells them who to nominate. And upon nomination or when you, they were nominated, so many people, their response is, no, I can't. Some had no reason. Don't ask me. I will, I will probably serve as an assistant, but not an assistant. They, they're telling you what they'll probably want to do. That's an example of someone running from God. Now, let me take it home to our young people. There are young people here who God has called to be different in class, different at home, different even at in a meeting or in church, different to be all by yourself. He's, he's asking you to be different even in church, but you're running from God. There are young people who God calls to be leaders, but you choose to be followers. There are young people who should know better, say better, do better, sound better, walk differently, but you refuse to listen to the call of God. There are young people here who were called to be active in AY, but just logging on or logging off. I don't know, in my church, we log on to AY at some point. That was a trouble. In fact, I had over 50 people on AY, and out of those 50, about five of them were youth running from God. But that's not a sermon today. The Bible commentary says that the very thought of journeying to Nineveh, the difficulties seemingly impossible 
of a task. And it made Jonah shrink from undertaking the divine commission. And he questions God's wisdom. See, Jonah failed to realize that with divine command come divine power. But Jonah sank into despair and discouragement, not necessarily because of the state of Nineveh. He knew that if he delivered the threat that God gave him to, Nineveh, to the Ninevites, then they may repent. <laughs> I find that I was reading the um, Patriots and Prophets. And I found it weird that a prophet who was supposed to deliver the message of God and cause people to come to repentance was afraid. It was a warning. He was going to warn them, I'm going to, this, this city will be destroyed. And yet he was afraid that God would have changed his mind. <laughs> Unbelievable. See, God is so mighty that even when he promises to destroy, even when he knows he should destroy, he still gives second chances. So what did Jonah do? He ran. Okay. So now that we've caught up, so that's all. So we've, we've caught up with Jonah running. So I've decided to entitle to this message, the second time around. Recharge, refocus. That's the theme of the Women's Day. Recharge, refocus. Recharge and refocus the second time around. I hope you brought your Bibles with you. So go on into your Bible. Go right there to Jonah chapter 1. Go on to Jonah chapter 1. Even if you have your digital Bibles, please take them out. I'm hoping you could read with me today. Jonah chapter 1, and we're going to read together verse 3. Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. But Jonah rose up and flee unto where, everybody? But Jonah rose up and he flee to Tarshish from the presence of who? And Jonah went where, everybody? And Jonah went, not, you, you skip a word. Jonah went down to Joppa. That's the first point. Jonah went down. That's my first point for you today, that when you run from God, there are some things that are bound to happen, and you're going down. You are going down when you run from God. When you run from God, you will always be on a trip downhill. You'll find yourself wondering why things are not going right. You'll find yourself wondering, why am I in this misfortune? You'll find yourself saying over and over again, I'm just having a bad day. Things just can't get any worse. And just when you said it, what happened? Get worse. Because anytime you run from God, you are going down. Now look at verse 3 again. It says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a what? And he found a? A ship going to Tarshish. All right. Point number two. When you run from God, you will always find a? Come on now. A ship. When you run from God, not only will you be going down, but you will always find a ship. What am I talking about? See, Satan is not going to lose the opportunity to put you in a vessel and cause you to move faster and farther away from God. There's always a moving vessel trying to move you away from the presence of God. All right. It may not be at the physical ship. But whenever you run from God, young people, isn't it amazing how quick you find yourself in a relation? All right. Isn't it easy to find yourself in certain friend, in certain fellow? When you run from God, there's always a ship, a relationship, a friendship, a fellowship that will take you away from the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I, I don't need to be in any ship that is going to take me away from the presence of God. 
Because not only will that ship take you away from the presence of God, but you are going to have to pay a price. Let's look at verse 3 again. Read it out loud one more time. But Jonah... Uh huh. Yes. He went down. Then he found it. So he. Ah. Uh, Jonah went down. He found himself in a. Uh, and now he has to. Hey, when you run from God, point number three, it's going to cost you something. It's expensive to run from God. If you're running from God, there's a price to pay. You find yourself into relationships that are just too expensive. I don't care how good the relationship and I don't care how good the friendship or the fellowship is. So long as you're running from God, it's going to cost you. I know somebody here today know what I'm talking about. Because you have been in some horrible relationships that cost you something. It will cost you your family. It may cost you your friends. It may cost you your dignity, your pride, your power, even your self-will. You're going down. Jonah went down in a ship. It cost him something. Read verse 4. What does verse 4 say? No, man, you're sleeping. Let's do it again. Read verse 4. Mm-hmm. What did the Lord send? A great wind. So after you go down, after you get into a ship, after you pay the cost, you are going to face a storm. Whenever you run from God, you are bound to face rough times. A storm will always follow you and you don't always have to be the one running either. See, sometimes you may be running and find yourself in the wrong ship. And that's why you have to be careful of the ship you get into because the storm may not be following you, but it's following the ship you found yourself in. So sometimes you may not even be the one running from God, young people, but it could be the person in your circle who is running from God and you find yourself in that friendship, that fellowship, that relationship. Get ready because you are going to go down. You are going to face a storm. Listen to me, ladies, church members. A friend is not somebody who talks about somebody else. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if they're always talking about somebody else with you, what do you think is going to happen when you're not there? If outsiders know all of your business, then you need to check your insiders. Check your ship. Not only that, but you have to be careful of your relationships. Some of you are in ships that are broken. You fall in love with someone who somehow took up the space and time that you should be given to God. You are so taken up by the relationship that you forget about the relationship you had with God. And oftentimes, you find the wrong girl or the wrong woman and the wrong boy and the wrong man. And these people will fail you time and time again because people will always do people things. Look at Jonah. He was on a ship, and when the storm came, who do you think threw him overboard? <laughs> the same people he was traveling with. The Bible didn't say they were friends, but it was his companions, those that were on the ship, who threw him overboard. See, some ships, 
will throw you under the bus. Am I talking to somebody? Some ships will not only, will, some ships are not able to see you through your difficulties. They don't want to help you. They can't be bothered. They turn your backs on you. Some ships. Now let's look at verse 10. Read verse 10 for me, please. What was the question they asked? Why have you done this? So now they are blaming who for the storm? It's him all right, but I'm trying to make the point about friendship. Verse 14 says, let us not perish for this man's life. So here it is that Jonah is facing a storm. His life is in danger. And I know some of us today are suffering from running fever as well. You have run from God, found yourself in certain situations, some comfortable spot. Listen, COVID hit. Not at this church. I'm amazed at this church. First time I came here and I saw everybody was afraid and panicking over COVID. I came to this church, doors wide open, fellowship is going on. Fellowship, I was amazed. Right? But there are some churches, when COVID hit, it was a little different. Conference, conference shut down some churches and they started to enjoy worship at home. Yes, they started to worship at St. Mattress or Sofa Seventh-day Adventist Church. They started to worship at Bedroom Seventh-day Adventist Church with Sister Pillow and Brother Remote. And that was completely fine. And even now, when some churches are reopened, they find it hard to leave the company of Brother Remote and Sister Sofa at St. Mattress. Find it very difficult. Not at this church. Praise God. But some of us are hiding. I know because I was one of those people. When COVID hit, I had just given birth. And I'm like, I'm not going to take my newborn child to church for a moment. And then I watch a program on the church and, I, and, and, and online and I said, I can't do this. Right. I had to find myself to church every Sabbath. I had that baby and my husband. You watch the baby. I'm in communications. I'll go upstairs. <laughs> I'm making sure those who decided to worship from St. Mattress Seventh-day Adventist Church that they're getting quality. I couldn't find myself. I was the AY leader at that time as well. And they think AY, fine, they don't want to come into the church. I found platforms. At one point, the AY program I was doing, you had people from Jamaica, Trinidad, Canada, all over tuning into the program until they learned how to do it themselves, friends. And they brought, branched out. We, we are so caught up in this church online that we are running from the responsibility. You know you, you're afraid. How many of us are afraid to even approach people on the street now? Come on. Am I speaking to somebody here? We are running from God. We are running from our responsibilities. Ro Jonah was running. He went into a ship. He paid the cost. And he went through some storm. Mercy chapter 1. Let's make our way over to chapter 2. What happened in chapter 2 and verse 1? Come on now. You got to read that differently. What happened in chapter 2 and verse 1? Then, after going through his storm, then Jonah, after finding himself in a ship, then Jonah, when he went through the storm, Jonah prayed. Thank you, Jesus, for second chances. We're talking about second time around. Recharge, refocus. Jonah 1 verse 2, Jonah prayed. See, that's my favorite part of the entire story. How many of, of us know that prior time is high time? Come on now. Prior time is the time for recharging, refocusing. Yes. 
How many of us know that when you are going through some stuff, when you pray, you feel better. You feel stronger. You feel, what would I say, bigger and better and better than before. Prayer is like a rejuvenating fountain to a weary soul, Ellen White says. See, some of us can't really say amen to that. Because, yes, I know it's COVID time. We've gotten a bit busy, so we don't find time to pray much. Not too long ago, the World Church, actually today is day number what? In the prior. See, the World Church is going through 40 days of prior. How many of us participated? How many of us took the time out to pick up the telephone even while you're driving? And tune in to a prayer session. How many of us made a list for seven people to be prayed for? How many of us found each day? They provided the material. All you have to do is read it. How many of us did that? You see, nowadays, I pray for everything. Every single thing. Sometimes I find myself praying three or four times over one meal. I eat the first spoon of rice. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Second, I'm praying again. I pray when I'm getting dressed. I even pray when I'm watching TV. A group of women who I pray with has it as their mission for prayer to become the breath of their souls. But we sometimes have no time to pray for ourselves. Are you hearing me? You know what we do? We call brother so-and-so and said, brother, pray for me. Do you understand? Pray for me. We ask them to pray for you. But the problem is that you, it's not that you call brother so-and-so to pray for you. Nothing is wrong with that. The problem is that you are too busy to pray for yourself. Because sometimes we don't know how to intercede on our behalf. We are too busy in certain ships. See, I have looked at prayer differently of late. I found out that prayer works, and if I ask God for it, he will deliver it. So he may not deliver it when I want it, but he's always on time. He may not deliver what I want, but he delivers what is best for me. So even when the answer is no, I understand, and I have to understand, because the answer came from Yes. See, even just this week, he said, the answer is no melody. And I didn't understand why it's no, because in my head, it really should be a yes. And so I didn't understand. It baffled me for days. I wait for a minute. I couldn't understand and I couldn't accept it. I found myself saying later on, though, devil, <laughs> yes, yes. You thought I was going to be discouraged, didn't you? You thought I was going to curse God, but even when his answer is no, I'm still going to praise my God because I know he knows what's best for me. See, I may not understand it in this moment, but I'm sure if I wait, it will be explained. I've gotten to a, the part in my life when I open my mouth. Not only do I open my mouth, but my heart starts to pour out. The other day I sat with a young person. I was having a conversation with her and she said, Sister Brown, I don't like to pray in public. Because I think prayer, it's, it's a private matter between you and God. And I understand and I could relate to what she was saying simply because of this. She thinks prayer with God is a personal thing. She takes it on a personal level. I understand that. Not, uh, not many adults can say that, to be honest with you. Sometimes I too get nervous praying in public. I'm not necessarily nervous of praying. I know what to say. It comes out. What I'm nervous of is that I get so deep. I let go so much that I'm afraid if something I'm hiding that should be private comes right out. Right out of my mouth. So that, that's one of the things I may be like if, if I'm fighting with hobby. You know? And if I ever open my mouth to pray, rest assured, Lord forgive me for saying this to hobby or whatnot. Because that's how serious and deep 
prior should be. I know when I, there's some things that you can't pray for me about. Right. See, I can ask you to pray, but I have to pray for myself. I know that when I go to my God in prayer, it's a powerful moment. I get a sense of reverence and deep submission that I am sometimes brought to tears. I don't mind that you pray for me. But Sister Johnson, I need to pray for myself. No one can communicate with God about my issues better than I can. No one can pour out their hearts to God better than I can. So I, you can't beat praying to God for me. You can help me pray, but you can't pray beat me praying for me. I know what's wrong with me. I know what God can do for me. I know what it's going to take for God to straighten me out. I can tell me some stuff about me that I can't tell you. So you can help me pray, but you can't pray for me because I have some stuff to tell God that I don't trust you enough to pray about it for me. You may not pray long enough. You may not pray hard enough. So I have to pray for myself. Right? So here we are. Jonah prayed. And the fact that Jonah prayed is significant. But where he prayed is even more significant. Verse 17 of chapter 1. Verse 17. Verse 17. Read it aloud for me, please. Where was Jonah praying? Ah. <laughs> it seemed to me that God purposely put Jonah in this situation. In order that Jonah might come to know God for himself. I want you to know that God did not forsake Jonah even though the prophet attempted to flee from him. By series of strange providences, he sought to effect a change in Jonah. That's amazing. The lesson here is that God will put you in a strange place, an uncomfortable place, in order that you might get refocus and recharge. I strongly believe that the Lord allowed us to go through COVID-19 so his people might become recharged and refocused. Understand this church that sometimes God will allow you to hit rock bottom in order for you to be recalled, remade, repolished, reused, recharged, and refocused. We need to thank God for the time you found yourself in the belly of a fish. You have to learn to thank God for the times you hit rock bottom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because if I didn't know that you are a, a, a God who could show up, well, if I didn't have my rent due, I wouldn't know that you're a God who would show up and pay my bill on time. Do you understand? Thank you, Lord. How would you know for yourself that God can heal your body if you weren't? Mercy. How would you know for yourself that God is above all friends if all your friends never walked out? Or talk about you. Or disappoint you. How would you know for yourself. That God can heal your broken heart. If your heart was never. How would you know for yourself. That God is a way maker. If you have never had a way. To be made by the Lord. I know I can be encouraged. By someone else's testimony. But it reaches home the more when I experience it for myself. I need to experience it for myself. See, somebody here ought to thank God for the times you were in the belly of a fish. Lord, I thank you for the bills that I had to pay. Lord, I thank you for the horrible neighbor that you've given me. Lord, I thank you 
for the setbacks you have made me. Lord, I thank you because had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I've heard one pastor say, Lord, I thank you because I know that my setback is a setup for my comeback. I thank you, Lord, for these experiences because I know for myself who you are. I thank you for making me hit rock bottom, Jesus, because otherwise I wouldn't know for myself that I can trust you. When you run from God and you've purposed in your heart to allow the Holy Spirit to recharge and refocus your Christian life, you are so high, re-energized that your praises can't be the same. Do you understand me? There's a, a little pep in your step when you walk. When you've been recharged, you know, you know the energizer bunny that keeps going and going. Who do you know that is recharged and would walk slow just the same? When you are recharged, there's a little bit more pep in your step when you're coming to church. When you are recharged, you can't sing song like worthy, worthy is my lamb and you're just in the is the lamb and you're just sitting down. Second chances. I thank you, God, that you are a healer. Thank you, Lord, for the recharge because you, you healed me. Thank you, Lord, that you're a provider, that you're a way maker, that you're a shelter in the time of storm. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your loving kindness. I thank you for the food, Lord God, when I was hungry. Says Jonah was in a certain situation, but Jonah prayed, recharged, refocused. Does anyone here know what I'm talking about? Has there anyone ever been in such a situation? You've been in a place where you couldn't do anything but pray. God put Jonah in a situation where he couldn't do anything but pray. He was at a place where God was in control. He couldn't run. He couldn't hide. He couldn't lose focus with the things of the world because God was working on him. Sometimes the point is, sometimes will God will put you on your back so that all you can do is pray. He will navigate your circumstances that you can't do anything but call on his name. God says, I'm putting you in this situation that you could call on no one else but me. You can't hear anyone else's voice but mine. As a matter of fact, God says, I'll put you so deep in the belly of a fish so that you would realize that you cannot survive without me. Recharge. Refocus. Isaiah 1 verse 8 says, come. Verse 18, come. Let us reason together. Now when someone say, come, let me reason with you. What is that person saying? Hmm. Let us talk. You and me. Serious business now. Right? So God put Jonah in a situation where he was able to say, come Jonah. Let us reason together. Jonah, in chapter 1, he ran from God. In chapter 2, he found himself in the belly of a fish. But then towards the end of the chapter, the Bible says that he had a change of heart. He says, enough is enough. I am tired of running. I am tired of doing it my way. Now I'm going to do it God's way. And now we're going over into chapter 3. It's only four chapters, so I'm almost done. He found himself going back to God. Read for me Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9. Verse 9 leads us into 3. Verse 9, what does it say? Amen. In other words, Jonah is saying, Lord, I will do what you said. I hear you now, Lord. I will keep my promise to you. Don't you know, Sister Cohen, that there's a danger in making a vow to God and not keeping it? The very thing you told God that you're going to do, you better do it. Lord, 
I lost my job. But if you help me get a new job, I promise I'll pay my tithe. Never paid. Lord, I, I know you own a cattle on a thousand hill. If you show up for me now, Lord God, open a door for me. I will worship you. Never happened. Some young people, Lord, I try to study, but I didn't understand. If you could just guide my pencil on the wrong part of the test, I promise I will show up. I'll never miss a day at church on Sabbath. Lord, I am sick. Lord, help me. Heal me, Lord God. You're the healing physician. If you could heal my body. But as soon as it goes into remission, your promise to God goes into remission too. Don't play with God. Prayer is not for emergency use only. God needs committed Christians, not inconsistent opportunists. When you found yourself in a place where you are ready to be recharged and refocused, God will deliver you. Jonah 2 verse 10, and the Lord spake unto the fish. <laughs> what did you say? The Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon. But where was Jonah? Where was Jonah when he started to pray? Somebody tell me. It, he was in the belly of the fish, but where was the fish? Where in the sea? Deep blue sea, all right. No, let's go find it in the Bible. It says here, verse. No, no, no. He was in the middle, mids. In Jonah's prayer, Jonah said it. Jonah says, Jonah says that he was found in the middle of the sea, the midst of the sea. Uh, which verse, what verse is it? Verse three of chapter two. All right. So Jonah rose up and went to the evening. No, that's not it. Into the deep, in the midst of the sea. So where was he? In the middle of the sea. No, in chapter 3, verse, what you just read just now, that the Lord spoke to the fish. The Lord spoke to the fish and then spit Jonah out where? Okay, I, I don't know if you're getting, the, getting, where, getting it right here. Jonah was in the midst of the sea praying. And when God talked to the fish, the fish vomit Jonah out where? Dry land. See, you mean to tell me that God had a conversation with the fish. That in, in itself is amazing. But what I want you to see or get is this. The spiritual lesson is that God can speak to your situation. And you don't even know that he's doing something while he is speaking to your situation. God will speak to your landlord. God will speak to your situation. And sometimes you're busy trying to figure it out. How did this happen? How? Lord, when did you do that? My child, God is saying, my child, don't worry. I remember when I had my student loan to pay long, long ago in 2006. And I love to tell the story because I was doing, I was getting ready to move to Florida, by the way. And my husband said, well, maybe what you're doing in communications won't thrive there. You need to find another, maybe think about another career. And so I decided to go into education. I know for sure from the first one that you don't want to take out another student loan because I was still paying it. And I said, Lord, I'm going into it. I don't know how it's going to happen. So I went first semester, excellent. Second semester came, time to pay. Almost $20,000 to pay. And all I went to the school with is like $5,000. I sat in that car and I prayed. I look at the account because they said it's time for you. School is starting. You need to pay it. And I prayed in that car and I said, Lord, this is all I'm going in with. I don't know how you're going to help me because at that school, they don't do payment plan or what. You, you, you can't start your, 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 your lesson and then decide that you're going to do a payment plan. They don't know if the pay, payments will be made by the time you get to the end of the semester. So they needed their money. I pray, bang the steering wheel, put my chest back, and walk into the bursar's office. Can't forget, a thick white man sat there. 
said, Lord, um, sir, Melody Walker Brown, ID number 001459, ready to pay um, for my, my, um, my, student, my, my, my semester fee, tuition. I know what the tuition is, but all I had in my pocketbook was about $5,000. And I said, and he, so, you know, he's supposed to just look it up. And then pay, you pay the amount. He was supposed to tell me at this time, 19,700 and whatnot. Uh, I just saw it. I said, Lord God, fix it. Lord God, just, I don't know what you're going to do, Lord, but I'm expecting a miracle. Now, I don't know where it was going to come from because there's no one there. I don't have connections. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, so I know my great godmother for somebody else's side paid for it. Never know it. I just saw when he got up, give me a second, and he went to another room. I said, yes, Jesus, you're working. And I just imagine I look up in, in space, and I just saw heaven turning upside down for the rest of the money to pay Matthew. And I just know, I just imagine that Jesus went over to a fax machine. The fax machine that sends something down to earth. Put in whatever he needs to put in. I never question it. I only imagine it. Send him down to earth. And when Bursa man came out, my tuition was less than the $5,000 I had in my book. I started to praise Jesus, right? He was, he was blown away by what he said. You don't know what my God just did for me. I walked back home, back home with money in my purse. And I just, I went the same steering wheel I beat before I came out. I sat in the cart and I gave it some beating again, I tell you. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, I, to this, this day, I don't know where that money came from. And I never questioned it. My tuition was paid because I asked God to pay it for me. And my faith, ever since then, has been growing. Before I had my, my child who was two years old, no. We've been asking for children forever, Lord. Blessings of the Lord. Nothing happened. Force God had nothing. I said, all right, Lord. One year, I'm a praise. Of, Lord, thank you for the baby. You're going to bless. No pregnancy. Lord, thank you for the hands. Thank you for the feet. Lord, I only have nine more months praising you. I praise him for the nine months. I said, Lord, thank you for the room that you're going to provide for a nursery. Thank you, Lord. I just keep, thank you, Lord, for clap your tiny hands, clap your tiny hands. I start training my voice to, to, to sing songs. Amen. One year after I got pregnant with a child, my faith just went from a level five to the highest. I said, Lord God, you're good. Lord God, you're good. We need to have the faith that when you pray, mountains are moved. And I could be here all day just telling you about when I pray. I may seem young, but I have a faith that is big, bigger than myself. I can't forget, I, at the same school I was studying into, I became a, a professor assistant. Drove to the school. I heard that the snowstorm was coming. I released the class. Just drops start coming down. Halfway home, I know the place like the back of my hand. And just like that, everywhere was white. I was lost. I kept going around in circle. I had a half tank of gas. It was now an empty. I was now at a fork road. Either I go left or I go right. But I didn't know which one, which way was home. But I did the only thing I knew how to do. I closed my eyes and with tears. And before I prayed, I called my husband. I said, I don't know what to do. The car is going empty. The place is covered with snow. I don't know where to go. I am lost. A 30-minute drive turned out into like three hours. And he said, I can't help you because he can't leave. If he leaves, he's going to be in danger as well because there was no driving on the road at that time. I closed my eyes and I said, Lord, you better show me. I said, show up, Lord. People say you're a God who's able to show up. Show up for me. And I close my eyes and in 10 seconds I count down. You either, you're either going to show me in my head left or you're going to show me right. And the Lord said, go left. And I said, thank you, Lord. That's all I need. I don't know where left was. But I heard his voice. I turned left. And in turning left, a gas station showed up out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, I filled my gas tank up and I started to drive and just singing, take me home, Lord Jesus. I was on a high. And then by the time I saw somebody, I said, yes, Lord, I know this place. You're in the right direction.
direction, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. You're taking me to the right place. Yeah. I lived up on a hill. I said, Lord, I'm not going up. I can park the car right here. I'll walk the way. I'll walk the rest. You've taken me this far. I'll leave the car right here. You got to pray certain prayers and believe when you pray. I'm talking about you can't, you cannot continue to be the same individual year after year after year. You need to be recharged, refocused because now is the time. Now is the time we are going home. Don't you understand it? It's go home time. Jonah prayed. But where Jonah prayed was significant in a situation. In the belly of, his, of a fish. When he prayed, he was in the midst of a sea. And as he was praying, God started to fix his circumstances. And Jonah found himself on dry land. See, the closer... Jonah got to God, the closer the fish got to the bank. The closer Jonah got to God, the closer the fish brought him out of his troubles. If the fish had vomited Jonah where he was, Jonah would still be in troubled waters. He would, yes, Jonah, that's right. Friends, you can't see it. But when you pray, God is moving you. He's turning your situation around. So when you finally come out, you are come out, coming out rejoicing. Recharge. Refocus. Because chapter 3 says, look at chapter 3. What chapter 3 says? And the word of God came unto Jonah when? When? The second time, arise and go into Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto the word. It's the same thing that was repeated in verse 1, if you have the Bible. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. It's the same thing is being repeated now in chapter 3. They said that when God repeats, it's grace and mercy being extended. If you don't get anything from the message today, get this. God. God is a God of second chances. And he's willing to get us recharged and refocused when you stop running. If you've read all the stories in the Bible, you'll find consistent theme. There's a thread of grace and mercy that runs through Adam, Noah, Moses, Elijah, David, and the list goes on. Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, but God covered him. Noah drank, but God sobered him. David tricked his father, but God forgave him. Moses murdered a man, but God called him. The theme, it's there. So what about you? We always think that God is looking for perfect people. But he can use broken people. Weak church members. Lazy church members. Miserable church. Grumpy church members. Sofa worshiping kind of church members. <clears throat> but that can only happen when you've purpose within your heart to be recharged and refocus. And everybody knows that things are better the second time around. All right, I'm West Indian. Uh, when I cook my boiled dumplings and one or two boiled dumplings are left over, I don't throw the dumplings out. Next day, I sprinkle it with the salt, I fry it and eat it the better the second time around. Right? And even a little... Uh, what do they call that sauce? Once you can't eat it right away, but the second time when it's left over, what's that sauce? It's the, um, um, no, 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 no. What's that sauce? Salsa or chili. You can't eat chili. Like if you eat it today, you put that down or sorrel. No, my grandma, uh, that's the way they call it. Sorrel was better the second Christmas. 
Not the first one. The first one she made it, but grandma put down a special container for the second Christmas. It was better that time around. Yeah. Rice and peas better the second day. So things are usually better second time around. When Jonah went to Nineveh the second time around, he was humbled. He was, he was a humble example of God's grace. He preached, the, the spirit of prophecy said he preached his heart out that every single soul, including kings and nobles, repented. Even animals repented. Better the second time around. No, he complained because God changed his mind, but that's not where I'm going with the sermon today. You look at the world around you. Yes, you've lost your home. You may have lost your car. You may have lost a family member, Sister Lezrin. You've lost something important. And Satan wants you to think that God calls all this because he doesn't love you. But God loves you more than I am able to explain. Shake off the hurt. Shake off the pain. Turn it over to Jesus. One songwriter says, you know, some turn it over to Jesus. You know, turn it over to Jesus and just smile the rest of the way. Sometimes it may take a storm that to see the sun again. And sometimes it may take a storm for you to find a hiding place in the bosom of Christ. God knows how far to take you, but he knows how to reel you in so you will trust him again, recharged, refocused. Amen. As I come to a close, I am appealing to our church members today. The need for revival and refocus. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself off focused and I need to be recharged. But I want you to know that God is calling you for the second time around. Make the decision instead of running, go tell. Go pray, go worship, go sing, go serve. But whatever you do, stop running. Stop running. Thank God for second chances. The book of Revelation verse 6 says the sixth seal has already been opened. You and I will agree that we're living in the last days. Last night for worship I read where it says that the, 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 the time of Nineveh <clears throat> is happening today even worse than it was. And you know it. You tune into the news. You're checking at home. I'm supposed to go in on vacation. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of going on vacation crime is so rampant and people are killing left right without any 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 remorse no feelings we're living in the last day people don't want to come to church anymore seventh day adventist christians don't want to do the work anymore the theme for the general conference is total member involvement so now you don't have to go to school to preach, to learn how to preach. Every member has a part to play. Jesus, as it says, Jesus is coming. Get involved. Refocus. Recharge. I don't know what the situation is here at church. If you are refocused, I don't know if that's the reason the woman ministry chose that topic. I don't know. But I'm just saying to you that you need to go ahead. You can find a song and sing. You need to get recharged and refocused to say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Say something to somebody. I just need to know that I love Christ and that's enough for me to tell someone else. That's enough. That's enough. The Savior is waiting to enter If that is your desire, I don't know. If you feel the need, say, Lord, tell me. I'm running. Lord, I'm in the 
belly of my fish. Lord, I pray right now. Rescue me, Lord. For me, cause something to happen that I reach myself back on land. Second time around, recharge, refocus. If that's your desire and you want to be prayed for, maybe you need, I told you, nobody can pray for you. today I want to pray with you not for you you're going to be praying for yourself but I want to pray with you stand to your feet if that is your desire said Lord send me Lord I am refocused Lord I am recharged use me one minute Bow your heads. Bow your heads. No one knows your situation but you. Tell him, Lord, save me. Lord, redeem me. Lord, re-energize me. You're already redeemed. Refocus. Recharged. ask you to pray with our brethren. Intercede on our behalf. Jonah when he prayed says I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So you're praying Sister Cohen, the prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you Lord that I have the ability to be recharged and refocused. you God for your mercy never fails you are here every moment every step of the way just waiting for us to give you that opportunity we praise you mighty God that you are so long suffering towards us and at this hour, Lord, we just praise you. For when we look at ourselves and we see ourselves even in the life of Jonah, you have called us, every single one of us here, this day, you have placed a call on every one of us. Some of us are still running still running Lord. still running us, Jesus but Stop here us, you Lord. are standing Lord. up before us Lord. come to me for I have a plan for you yes those of 
of us this day, God, that are willing to yield ourselves to you. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray that you would take our stubborn will Mercy, Lord. and to make us over again. We praise you this day that you are the God of second chances. Yes, Lord. Whatever we are facing in life, because of our stubbornness and our wayward ways. We pray, oh God, that you're a God who will still see us through, a God who is willing to guide us through safely to the other side. So God, we grasp with both arms today, your hands. Thank you for this second chance. Thank you, Lord, that we can be reconnected for mission for you. We can go tell yes, Lord. because you have given us of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And we are able to do, to be empowered, to be all that you desire us to be. God, we recognize that there is a world that is dying in sin. And you must use us to accomplish this work. God, even in yourself, there is a time when you will come a second time. And this is the time that we are looking forward to. The time when you will come and save us. Better the second time around. The first time you came as a babe, but the second time around, praise God. You shall come as King of Kings. You shall come as Lord of Lords. You shall come as the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh God, we praise you for second chances. For indeed, you are a wonderful God. May you bless us as we are dismissed from this place today. Rejoicing in the hope that we have in the second chance that you have given to us. May none of us leave here today holding on to our stubborn ways, but may our hearts be truly yielded over again to you to allow you to recharge us, to refocus our minds on Jesus Christ who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which we can ever hope or think. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being the God of second chances. We just praise and glorify your name. Amen.